Hi, this is Mary Poplin with Boris Effects. Today we're going to show you how to replace a logo on packaging using the insert tool inside of Mocha Pro. This technique works in any host, whether it be Premiere or Avid or After Effects. And today we're going to show you how to do this inside of After Effects 2019. To get started, we need to apply Mocha Pro. We can do that by going to Effect, Boris Effects Mocha and selecting Mocha Pro, or we can go to our Effects and Presets search menu and just type in Mocha. We can select Mocha Pro and drag it and drop it onto our footage that way. Before we get started, we need to set up our views. Since this is not a 360 shot, by default it's set to mono. If this were a stereo shot, we would need to select stereo and we would need to decide whether or not it was top and bottom or left and right. Because Mocha reads right off the timeline, I need to make sure that I'm on my full resolution, and we're going to hit Launch Mocha. Now this is actually a pretty tricky track, so what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we're tracking from areas of the most detail to the least detail. So what does that mean? That means where the object is the largest in frame, least blurry, and most parallel to the camera, and in this case that happens to be the very last frame. We're going to select our X spline and we're going to draw it around the objects we're trying to track. I'm going to select all four of my points, and I'm going to pull them tight for corners. I like X-splines because you can relax for curves and pull tight for corners. We're going to make sure that we're a little bit outside of the edge of the object, but not wildly outside the edge of the object. And that means we may have to use the point insertion tool to add a quick point right here, and make sure that our gap is just not gigantic around the edge of our object because Mocha is a texture tracker. So what does that mean? That means that Mocha looks for a pattern of pixels moving through the scene, and it tries to match the pattern of pixels inside of your shape tool, and then it builds a track based off of that. Your surface tool represents your track, and your shape tool is where your track is looking. So we're going to look at this texture to track this motion. We're going to name our layer Left Tube, and we're going to go back to our x tool and turn off our mats. Now this object over here is a little bit trickier to track. It's very shiny on top, so I want to avoid this reflection when I track. Therefore, I can make a shape that looks something like this. And we're going to track the edges, but we're going to avoid the bulk of the reflection. The reason we do that is because Mocha considers reflections to be occlusions. So any of this data is reflecting planes that are somewhere on the other side of the room and lights and all kinds of things. We want to avoid that and just track the object. We're going to name this, and we're going to make sure we're tracking translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective for both of these. We're going to select both our layers, make sure our gear is on because that's our action item in Mocha. Now I'm actually in classic mode, but we do have an essentials mode that can be easier for tracking, but because I'm using the insert module, I'm going to stick to classic mode. For more about why we use perspective and the fundamentals of planar tracking, check out our Getting Started with Mocha series on our website under our training section or our Mocha TV section. Now we're going to turn our surface tools on and we're going to select both of our layers so that we can see our surface tools while we are tracking. It's even better if we take our surface tools and we align them to some of these points that our DP or our VFX supervisor put on our objects. And this is going to come in handy later when we really start to track in earnest, because once we get to a certain blurry section, we are not going to be able to track using Mocha's automatic tracking anymore, and we will have to use manual tracking to finish this off, and I'll show you how to do that. So let's hit track backwards. Up, oh, and we have lost our track. So here's what we can do. We can jump to manual track, and we can make sure in manual track that we set ourselves some keyframes. I can take my surface tool and I can move it to align with the dots that are on our package. And I can keep doing that until we're off screen. Notice how the shape moves with the surface tool, not the other way around. And that's how you animate a track off screen when there's just not enough texture to track. Basically, you end up doing hand animation for a couple of frames. Once we're satisfied that that track is correct, we can go ahead and switch back to large motion for both 
of our layers. And the reason we do that is because we're about to align our surface tool to our object properly. But first, now that our track is complete, we're going to talk a little bit about how we import packaging to replace these packages. I'm going to save my project and close Mocha. I'm then going to save my host file because that actually saves our plugin data. The plugin data is not saved in your host file unless you save it inside of the host, just like any other plugin you're used to using. In order to replace this packaging, I've actually made a file inside of Photoshop. I got the original plate by cheating a little bit. In Mocha, we have a module called the Remove module, and it will actually save out any frame from your shot for you to paint. We do this for clean plates inside of the Remove module, but I can cheat and just hit Create Clean Plate and use this for my inserts. So we can save our original file right here, and in Photoshop, I can paint this file using things like the Heal tool and the Rubber Stamp tool. Digital painting is digital painting, but I want you to notice a couple of things. One of the things is that I overpainted the fingers. And that's because I'm going to have to rotor these fingers back over the top, and I want the packaging to be visible underneath those fingers when I'm compositing my shot. And then it was a really simple matter of copying the product package from this file to a new file and designing a product logo to go over the top. This isn't exactly gripping product design, but you get the idea. And I used the exact same technique for my other package. I imported these into my project and I can drag them right into my comp. And because I took them from the original image, they're the same pixel per pixel. So we can just align them right over our shot if we want. A good trick for checking alignment is going to our blending mode and using difference. And then we can nudge until we see mostly black pixels. And then we can set it back to normal. We'll do the same thing for our second package. And that is also in alignment. So now when we hit normal blending mode, there's our package in perfect alignment. And here's our package in perfect alignment. Now we can insert this in a couple of ways inside of the insert module. I can go to layer, pre-compose, and move all the attributes into the new composition, and do the same thing for my second layer. Layer, pre-compose, move all attributes into the new composition, and I can drag these underneath my shot and launch Mocha. Once inside of Mocha, I can turn my surface tool on, and I can expand the planar surface on the very last frame, because that's where I aligned my shot inside of After Effects, and make my surface tool the full frame of my shot. I can then go to my Insert Clip and select Insert Layer. I can save this and close it, and then inside of my module renders, I can select Insert Layer and Insert Composite and hit Render, and my insert will be in alignment inside of my shot. But, because I'm using one insert layer and it's only a single insert layer per track, I'd have to duplicate Mocha Pro and I'd have to change my insert layer and then I can composite these back over my shot. But I don't want to use that method. There are other methods I could use. What I'm actually going to do is I'm actually going to go to Mocha and I'm going to do some compositing right inside of Mocha. We're going to go to our end frame and we're going to go to Insert Clip, and we're going to import my transparent PNGs. This workflow is actually very helpful if you're working inside of Avid, because Avid doesn't always respect alpha channels very well, and this has Mocha just bypass the host's alpha channel reading and uses Mocha instead to read it. So we can make sure that our surface tool is aligned properly, and what I like is that I have this nice transparent edge that allows me to see what my alignment looks like. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for this right hand tube. We're going to import our logo. So we're actually going to fit this surface tool to our comp so that we reset it to a square. And we're going to drag our surface tool into the edges of our object, just like this. And now our products move correctly with our tracks. 
and they look a little weird because we haven't applied motion blur. So I'm going to go to the insert tool and I'm going to apply motion blur for both of my packages. And now we're going to hit render backwards just to see what it looks like. So it looks really nice and the reason we are not rendering these frames over here is because there's no track for them. But that won't matter when we render back on our host. So that looks pretty good. But we have one more problem. We can't see our fingers. So we're going to take our insert tool and we're going to set it to none. And then we're going to draw a shape around our fingers. We're going to call this right hand. And we're going to call this left hand. We're going to take left hand and we're going to link it to our left tube track and our right hand we're going to link to our right tube track because we've actually already got the information for them. And we're going to let those just track right off screen and we're going to correct anything that we need to correct shape wise. We can use our transform tool and turn our surface tool off to make sure our roto looks really nice. All right, so that's probably good enough. So if we go back to our insert clip and we apply our objects again, we can go into our insert tab. We can say, hey, let's use the mat for the right hand and invert it. And let's select our left package and let's use our mat for the left hand and invert it. And if we hit render, we're going to have some really ugly edges. So instead, let's turn our overlays back on. Let's select our shape. Let's hit Uber key. Make this nice and round. And we can actually come over here to add an edge width and add some feathering, just like that, to our fingers. We can do the same thing for these fingers over here. We can smooth out those lines and add some edge feathering. And so now we have feathered edges throughout our shot. So if we hit render again, and I turn my overlays off, our edges look much nicer. And we still have nice shadows going over our text. But if I come down here to where we have a lot of motion blur and I hit render, we've still got kind of wonky edges on our shapes because it's just a feather. So I can actually select my motion blur parameter right here for my left hand, still using my Uber key because that will animate it for the entirety of my shot, and add motion blur, click the right one, and add motion blur. And so now when I hit render, I end up with a much nicer mat, and everything blends perfectly together. So we're going to hit file, save project, and we're not going to render this in Mocha, we're going to render this in After Effects. So save and close. Inside of After Effects, we're going to have our Insert Composite. And After Effects will use the Mocha Pro plugin to render this back to my timeline. And because this is non-destructive, I can change the packaging over and over and over again. So if your client makes design changes, you can change the packaging. And that's the power of the Insert tool. It works inside of any host, and you can use it to do incredibly complex compositing tasks in not a whole lot of time. So no matter what your product replacement is, you can replace it easily with Mocha Pro. To find out more, visit us on www.borisfx.com.